Good morning, everybody. My name is Carla, and you have reached my floss tube channel, Carla Being Crafty, where I talk about mostly cross stitch, but also other crafts that I enjoy and a little bit of life thrown in. Uh, today is floss tube number 227. It is Sunday, February 4th. Welcome. If this is your first time finding my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope that you like what you see, want to hit like and subscribe, and come back each week to see what I'm working on and how far I've gotten and all that good stuff. If this isn't your first time finding my channel, well, thank you for coming back, spending the time with me. Um, I so enjoy um, putting out these videos, mostly. Sometimes it's hard to, to, you know, get up and get dressed and turn on the camera, but mostly I really enjoy it. I look forward to it and I especially look forward to seeing the comments that come back and, and knowing that you guys are watching my videos, etc. Um, I do have um, a super thanks button below if you wanted to give a monetary tip. Of course, it's not necessary, but, you know, I'll put it out there. Um, we're all struggling along in this world, and if you see something, or if I say something that's extremely helpful or entertaining, um, and you want to give a monetary tip, you can always do it that way. Um, you can also do it through PayPal. Um, I got rid of the buy me a coffee and all that kind of stuff just because it was like too many things and to be honest I don't get that much so it's not like I'm having to uh, organize it every week so um, yeah it's just a little bit much to like keep track of so I just decided to stick with the super thanks and then um, PayPal if, uh, if you're so inclined which of course you don't have to but if you want to it's always appreciated. Um, I always give a Southern California weather report. Um, this week, very, very weird. At the beginning of the week, it got, or I get, I, we got up into almost like 80 degrees for like three days, something like that last week. And then on Thursday, it popped back down to 60 and rained all day. And it was, it was nice and sunny on Friday and Saturday, although last night it did rain. And then now completely gray and windy and it's gonna start uh, raining any time now. Actually, the forecast is like later in the afternoon, but it looks like it's gonna rain any minute. Um, and we're supposed to have rain for like three days. So, and then I think two days without and then more rain. So yeah, our weather here is, is being weird. Like I said, it got up hot actually for three days and then went back down to really chilly. So that's where we're at. Um, it's going to be a gray, rainy day, um, which actually I really love, especially when I'm home. Especially when I'm home and I can snuggle up with my kitty and blankets and stitching and a movie. That's, to me, perfect. So, you know, time to get out the hot chocolate and the popcorn. That was my, that was my go-to after-school thing um, when I was in high school. When I'd, I'd walk home from school, if it was like a rainy day, you know, I still had to walk home because my mom was working. Um, and I'd get home and I would make a big batch of popcorn on the stove. Um, my mom had a pressure cooker that was broken. So it was actually a pot, a, you know, not like an electric one like we have now, but it was a, a pot that you would do use on the stove. But it was broken, so it didn't, it didn't pressurize. Um, and the lid had a little steam vent in it that had used to, used to have been the, um, the pressure thing, but now it was just a little like hole. Um, it was perfect for popcorn cause the steam could come out and, and I would shake it on the stove and it made perfect popcorn. So I would, uh, I would make a big batch of popcorn and hot chocolate and I'd get on the couch and my kitty at the time named Claudia would curl up because she, ate, she liked popcorn. So it'd be like three popcorns for me, one popcorn for her. Um, so she would eat the popcorn with me and I would read a book and it was the perfect like after school activity. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this past week, as you guys know, has been, was kind of difficult for me emotionally, you know, um, with the feels. Uh, Monday was the anniversary of my mom's passing and Friday was the anniversary of my dad's passing. So the whole week was, just off and on hard. It's not like I spent the whole week in a cloud of depression or anything like that. It's just every so often I would just have moments of, you know, I miss them. Um, my mom more than my dad. I mean, my dad died when I was 10, so I'm pretty used to like not having him around, but, um, but still, 
um, sometimes it gets me and Monday was definitely a hard day for me. Um, definitely miss my mom. Uh, I woke up Tuesday morning and honestly, I felt way better. I think it was just that, the pressure of just knowing the day, you know? Um, but also on Monday I got my car back, so I guess it balanced me. My mom was there, like, prodding the mechanic. She needs it. Give it back to her. Um, so I did get my car back on Monday, which is overall a very good thing, right? And I'm not beholden to anybody else for rides now. I can come and go as I please. Um, I do have that little bit of, you know, when's the other shoe going to drop? attitude always always so it's like when is something else gonna break when is something else gonna go wrong but i'm trying to keep that at bay um one thing that was nice about getting my car back and this is such a, a minor thing but really it is actually a great improvement to my day um i have been listening to um books on tape for a couple years now basically in the car so um i do have a radio and all that kind of stuff but i just got sick of listening to different things on the radio and i decided to go ahead and, and get the books on tape and i went through uh you know the whole hp series that we're not supposed to talk about anymore <laughs> i still love the books um i haven't purchased anything along those lines in years and years and years but i still love the books so um i listened to the entire lord of the rings trilogy on tape um and then what I was listening to when my car broke is I had got the three, um, and now beware, when I get these books, I get them off of eBay, I get them used, I get them for cheap. Um, because it's like if you paid full price, ridiculous. And I mean, I guess you could get them from the library, but um, I don't want to have to like listen to a deadline or anything like that. So anyway, um, I got the Hunger Games series and I listened to the first Hunger Games which I really enjoyed. Um, I saw the movies with Reagan because she insisted she loves them. Well, Reagan and Stacy both really liked them. And I watched, I think I saw all of them except for the last one. Because um, there's four, right? Um, I don't think I saw the last one. Um, so I listened to the first book, enjoyed it. And I was like, it just started the second book when my car broke. So I got my car back. I was planning on listening to them. But in all honesty, the Hunger Games books are not, I mean, they're good books and they're interesting and stuff, but they're not like fun. They're all, it's very negative. It's, you know, apocalyptic kind of stuff. And, and I just wasn't in that place, but I had just ordered when my car broke down, I had just ordered, um, on Logan's recommendation, um, the five Percy Jackson novels. Um, cause Logan has told me for years, like the Percy Jackson movies, which I like, he said, they're horrible. They're, they have nothing to do with the books. And, you know, basically what any, uh, book lover of a book or book series usually feels about the movies is the movies are crap because they don't do justice to the books. And that's basically what Logan's feeling was. And Logan has said for years that Percy Jackson books are his absolute favorite. He was very excited that the Disney uh, series was coming out, which was supposed to be very much more based on the books. Um, and he talked to me about that and I'm like, well, I have these books. I don't want to watch the series until I listen to the books. Um, so when I got my car back, I texted Logan. I'm like, okay, I'm starting to listen to the first, first Percy Jackson. And he was like very excited. He's like, can you please like, let me know what happens in the books and where you are and what you're thinking? Cause you know, he's like, I would really love to hear somebody else's opinion. So, um, Aside from the fact that I actually am enjoying the book quite a bit, um, I love the fact that I can connect with my 16 year old nephew based on listening to these books. So I have been giving him a little report every other day on, okay, that we're up to here in the book. And um, he gave me a breakdown like, okay, chapters one through four is the first episode on Disney Plus. And so basically I'm like, okay, I finished that first section. I can watch the first episode. and. So that's what I've been doing and, and I've really been enjoying it. So, you know, it's kind of like, it's a fun thing to like make it not so hard to get out of the house in the morning to go to work. It's like, oh, I can listen to the book on the way to work. So anyway, so that's what I've been doing there. Um, the weather, although I love it when it's like this, it has been playing hell on my knees. Um, and my hands actually, but my knees have been really bad this week. And um, 
that is a good reason uh, or good I don't excuse <laughs> I haven't worked on my little golden books this week is what I'm trying to say and it's just because I don't want to sit in this chair for any length of time and what happens when I get into the little golden books is I tend to get into it and I end up sitting here for like four hours and then I get up to move and I and I can't move very well so um that will happen as as you guys know I'm at the very last step on these books and I just need to get them finished and get them out to you guys but it's gonna be just a little bit longer <laughs> Please, please just be patient with me. Um, okay, so let's get into what I worked on this week. Um, I have a couple new things that I knew, not, well, I have a couple new stitching things, but I have a couple new things that I started that I'm excited about to discuss with you. Um, but we'll put that more towards the end. Um, I tend to like leave the good stuff. <laughs> I'm like that with everything. Um, you know, if you have two halves of a bagel and the underside is not very exciting and the top is the one that has all the, the sprinkles on it, I eat the plain one first and save the better one. I think there's a psychological test in that, but anyway, that's how I am. Okay, so uh, I did work on crochet yesterday. Um, I had four balls of this lion uh, brand Mantala Thick and Quick. Um, I used it to make the basket that I have my yarn in. I showed in my finish parade. Um, it's big and full of yarn, so I'm not going to haul it over here. But um, I got four balls of this color to make another basket. Um, and I worked on that yesterday. Um, I wanted to try and just make it with two balls so I can make two. And this is going to take more than two. Um, I don't think it's going to take a full three, so I'm going to take, so I'm on the third one, and then when I decide that the walls are high enough and I stop it, then I'm going to make a matching one smaller to use up the rest of the yarn, if that makes sense. So this is a square basket, and as you can see, my walls are that high. I only want it to be like this high. Um, because it's actually to go under, I have a cedar chest that was actually my mom's, it's older than I am. And I use it as like my coffee table kind of catch-all thing um, by my day bed. And there's like this much space underneath it. And of course, uh, space is at a premium here. Um, so I have like a box under there now um, that holds all of my like nail supplies and stuff. Um, but it's falling apart. So I wanted a basket to replace it. Um, and then I'm gonna make another matching one smaller that can go under there as well. So it'll slide in and out under my thing. But um, I'm doing way better this time than the first one I made. Um, I think I've got the, the turn figured out so that I'm not gaining stitches every time. The first time I did it, it was terrible. Um, so yeah. That's what I worked on yesterday, is this basket. And I think I'm gonna try and finish this today. It shouldn't take me that long. And then maybe I'll start the, the smaller one. So that's what I did as far as crochet this week. Um, as I said, my hands have been a little bit um, stiff, like arthritis-y feeling, and they were like that yesterday. So when I was working on the crochet, I kind of worked a little bit and then I'd rest and then I worked a little bit and rest. It's just all in all, my hands have been a little bit sore lately, and I think it's just the change in the weather. Okay, I had two new starts this week. Um, both of them are for my B, uh, my own Valentine's style, which I discussed a lot last week. If you didn't watch that, then you can go back and it'll explain it all. I did the, I started the gnome or the Beehive House, which is a Mill Hill little ornament kit. And not a ton on this yet, but you know, just a little start. And I always enjoy doing these little, these little guys. I like stitching on the perforated paper um, for the Mill Hills. Um, I don't think I'd want to do everything on them, but I like it, you know, as a another medium to use. 
And then I started I'm trying to find the picture. My velvet, my velvet stitch B. This is a little uh, kit that I got and just thought it was like so cute. And so um, I started that and I showed last week, I got this this piece from on sale from Kohl's and um, I want to put the B right there and totally will fit um, vertically. And then horizontally I measured and I can get two. So that's what I'm doing. I figure I have enough floss and stuff that I should have enough floss to do two. And if I run out, I'll just substitute color. They're not, you know, I could have two Bs that are two different yellows or something, but I don't think it's gonna be an issue. Um, now, I replaced the fabric. You know, it came with just a little piece of like Kit Ada. Uh, like this. So I just pulled this out and, you know, I'll put it in my dyeing stash. Um, and I had this that I had ordered a while ago. Um, I don't even know if you're gonna be able to tell. Oh, I guess you can, and it's actually showing up okay in the camera. Um, so it is a fabric flare, like beehive fabric. So it's just got this printed, very lightly printed beehive, and I got it with gold, gold sparkle, which I don't even know if you can, you can kinda see the gold sparkle, maybe a little bit. Anyway, so I just cut out a piece of this for this little project, <clears throat> and I started the bees. And <clears throat> what it says to do is it says to do, there's a little bit of cross stitching on it, like very, like eight stitches or something on each bee. And, um, well, 12, 12 stitches on each bee. And then the legs are back stitch with uh, different, um, thicknesses and then the wings are back stitched with a metallic thread so it says to do all of that first and then you do the velvet stitch for the actual beads so I started and got the black the the uh, full crosses and the back stitch done and then I have to do the wings and then I can do the velvet stitch and then they will go On that, and I think it's gonna look really cute. So, I read the instructions for the velvet stitch. It doesn't look super difficult. Um, they give a little, um, they call it a knitting needle. It's actually, it looks like it's a manicure stick. It's a little orange wood stick. Um, a little stick. And that's what you use to do this velvet stitch. Like you have to hold the stick below your row of stitches and then, you know, it shows you where to come up and then you loop around the stick and go back in so that all of your loops, I guess, are the same length. Um, but anyway, so um, I don't think that that's going to take too long to finish that project. So that's pretty exciting. So those were the two kind of new starts that I had this week. Um, this one... I guess it can be considered a new start because um, I actually put in, well, this is the one that I started last week, but then I had to frog everything out of it, <laughs> and then I started again. So this is Purple Allium um, by Riolis. And um, this came with a white kit Ada, which I dyed. Um, because it's me and I don't like white kit Ada and I can't, you know, I can't leave well enough alone. So, uh, I think, yeah, I think it goes this way. So, that's what I got started so far. And,. Nothing too exciting yet, but but now I actually have stitches instead of holes where stitches were pulled out. So 
So that is purple allium. Um, I worked on Mouth of the Flower by Octavia Ocampo this week. I am fascinated. Every time I pull this out, I'm just fascinated by this picture. Um, I don't, I've never seen anybody stitch it. I've seen somebody stitch the companion piece, which is... Um, called Bird Family, and I did see a picture of it, so what kind of was it? Oh, this is the companion piece, Bird Family. And I have looked up this artist to see if there's any other, like, charts, because just they're, they're kind of fascinating, um, but I don't think, I mean, he has other artwork, but I don't think they have, there's anything else that's been turned into cross stitch charts. I think they just had an Amazon delivery. Okay, so I finished this leaf and worked a little bit down here. And this is an old project because I just don't work on it very much. Um, it comes out uh, every year and I work on it two or three times and that's it. So, I mean, I think it'll come to a point where I'm more interested in doing this one um, and it'll get more work at a time. But for right now, it just gets a little bit, a little bit every year. But I'm not in any rush. I worked on another mill hill. This is pomegranates. It's, it's, I find this very funny because, you know, as you may know, um, this, I, last year I had this on my inactive list. I had no interest in working on it. And then when I did my whip parade and I looked at it and I'm like, I don't know why do I have this on the inactive list and I took it off and started working on it and now it's like I love it and I want to get it done <laughs> so I guess putting things on the inactive list it did its job right it like it made me realize the things that I don't want to work on anymore for real and it made me realize the things that um or to get a renewed interest in other things Uh, pulled up this these white stitches and started you know on the stem stuff up here so it is kind of coming into where you can see that they're actually pomegranates doing the beat the beating on this is going to be intense I think I mean there's a lot of beating on this especially in the pomegranate part so that would be fun. And then I think it's going to just look delicious, you know? Pomegranates are, are delicious. Okay, and then last but not least, and I have to finish Logan's gift. It keeps like rolling out at me here. Um, telling me, finish me, finish me. Um, the last thing I worked on is my frog bouquet. Excuse me. Hmm. My design works. And I worked on her, her little head. So this I am planning on a finish this month. So I'm planning on a finish on this. I'm planning on a finish on the bees for sure. Maybe the uh, beehive house too. Um, 
I see all of these floss tubes where it was like my first finish of 2024 and I'm like, I need that. <laughs> I mean, I need to be able to put that on as the title of a video. Okay, so that was all of my, um, my stitching for this week, but that is not all I did. So, two things that I kind of got into, I don't even know what the word is. Um, so one begat the other. So the first thing, so I, sorry, I'm like losing my words. Like how do I explain what I wanted to tell, tell you guys? All right. So you guys know that I'm going to a retreat in November. I'm very excited about it. It's going to be my first retreat. It may be my only retreat because it is, uh, very close to my house, which means I do not have to, uh, take a plane. I do not have to get a hotel room. Um, it is called the wish when you wish upon a stitch retreat. It's very close to Disneyland. They're going to do a Disneyland trip on Sunday, which I'm not interested in. And, um, I was gifted this retreat by my wonderful friend, Julie stitching at the cabin. Um, because the retreat opened up, um, right when my car <laughs> decided to have a major problem and I was hemming and hawing about whether I was going to be able to do it and she she gifted it to me. It was right before the holidays and she's like, you know, I want you to go with me or I, I want to go and I don't want to be there without you. So anyway, she gifted it to me, which was so wonderful. So, you know, it's not till November, but I'm thinking about it now. I mean, that's part, I think, of the fun of having something like that is planning and thinking about it and, you know. I mean, that's why people, why they, why they make a Facebook group, right? So people can ask questions or talk or whatever. So, and I actually am pretty excited because it seems like a good, a good chunk of people are actually from this area who are going. Um, so it'll be nice to connect with some people, um, you know, that maybe can become in real life stitchy friends as well. Um, you know, that we can actually like get together occasionally. So that'd be cool. Um, but anyway, so you know, a lot of people when they have a retreat, um, I mean, I, and I have no idea what is going to be given. Um, you know, there's been stuff on the Facebook group, like, you know, the organizer, like she found the best gift or she found the best needle minder as a gift for everybody. So I mean, you know, there's, there's going to be some goodies. I, I think that there's going to be a chart. Um, that usually happens with the retreat is there's a special chart that is um, designed for the retreat for the, the participants. So that'll be exciting. Um, but a lot of people, when they're going to retreats, they'll have a stitch that they're either doing leading up to the retreat to show at the retreat or a, a uh, stitch that they're planning to start at the retreat. So I was thinking about that. Um, if there is a brag table, because this it's not 100% Disney themed, but it's kind of a Disney themed retreat just because of the location and and that kind of thing. Um, if there is a brag table, I want to bring my Mirabilia, um, the Mediterranean, Mediterranean Little Mermaid that I did, because um, I'm super proud of that conversion that I turned, you know, this really iconic Mirabilia, which is a, a really nice chart in and of itself, but I turned it into a Disney character. I put my own spin on it. Um, I love that kind of conversion. So, I was thinking about the retreat and I wanted something, not necessarily to start at the retreat, but something in honor of the retreat. And so I looked on, you know, Etsy and I looked on eBay and I looked for like Disney charts. And the reality is, is although I love Disney, um, there's no like Disney character that I love so much that I would want like a big uh, chart of it. You know, I mean, I love the Disney dreams. If those were still available, those I would have probably wanted to get, but I don't love them enough to pay hundreds of dollars for a kit. Um, and the little ones, which are available for a more reasonable amount, usually are not that cute. Um, like, have you seen the Little Mermaid one? Where, I mean, Eric's face looks like he was in some kind of weird accident. I mean, they're not charted that great. Um, so anyway, I couldn't find anything that I really liked. And so then I was thinking about it some more, and I thought, wouldn't it be cool to do like a conversion of something? And also I'm trying to not purchase a bunch of stuff. And I realized I had a chart in my kit 
are in my stash right now. And I started looking at it and I'm like, I could totally convert this. So that is what I'm doing. And I'm really excited. I, I got this idea and you know went to town with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn the Petal Fairy, Mirabilia's Petal Fairy, into Tinkerbell. It's gonna require very little other than color conversion, um, except for, you'll notice like she has, she kinda has like a bun at the back of her head. So I'm going to move that bun to the top of her head, um, which I don't think is gonna be that difficult. She has a big flower um, in a lot of, um, I looked at a lot of different Tinkerbell images and she does, sometimes she has a green ribbon, sometimes she has a blue ribbon, and sometimes she actually has like a white flower. Um, so that flower is gonna stay, just gonna be moved. And then it's basically a big color conversion. So um, the flower, this main flower and the stem are gonna stay, her skin is the same. Um, her hair, I'm gonna change it from brown to very blonde. And her dress, I'm changing from the colors it is to green. Um, and then her wings are going to be blue. So, um, I went ahead and I went and did this like whole color conversion. I did like symbol to symbol kind of thing. So sometimes I have like the same symbol with three different colors because depending on, is it in her wing? Is it in her dress? Is it in the flowers? Cause the flowers are the same. So I did that. I went and I, and I, did the color conversion. So that was like a whole evening's worth of work. It was kind of fun. I went through my stash. Um, so I didn't purchase anything. I just went through my stash. And that brought me to this other project that I kind of started because I was like, well, um, normally I can't using fl uh, floss cards, uh, you know, the long plastic names, but the, the 20 holes, but I used 10. But I thought floss drops would be fun. And I thought, well, I could get like Mickey shaped floss cards, whatever. But it brought me to this other thing. So I made floss drops using playing cards. I found a deck of Disney 100 and they're all kind of that holographic. And I made floss cards. Now, it, this is totally extra. It is not, um, necessarily practical it is not necessarily like an efficient use of space but oh my god I love it <laughs> and I love this deck uh, this deck was perfect because adding the holes and stuff didn't affect the cards so as I said and I used the entire deck except for I think two cards so this is a deck of these Disney 100 cards and I just I left the cover one on um, intact I put them on two rings like this because I do like being able to do like flip. Um, I have a colored card in front of each section. So it'll be easy to find the section as far as um, I have the flower and stem, skin, hair, wing, and dress. And then these are the cards. And they are kind of holographic. So um, the way that this deck is set up is like the black cards and the red cards are the same except the black cards are in black and white and the red cards are in color. So you have, what is that, 26, 26 different pictures. Um, and so you have a black and white set and you have a colored set. And I, at first I was like, okay, keep them in order. And then I'm like, you know what? No, just mix them up. So they're all mixed up. And um, what I did is I put the two holes at the top. And partly I had to do the two holes at the top too instead of doing it one in the middle because I was wanting to get all the holes aligned correctly. So of course I was using the edge of the, um, the card and you know, that is where putting the card all the way in to my, my hole punch, you know, that's where they came. So I decided to do two holes. Then I have one hole at the bottom. That's for extra thread if I want to use it that, and then the big oval hole for the the floss. So as I said, I know this is like way extra, but I also going through these flosses is going to be um, a joy in and of itself as I stitch on this. And I think what I want to do is before before the retreat starts, um, 
I will try and get like the flower and the stem done and then so I can start working on Tinkerbell at the retreat. And that's my my basic plan. I also think I'm gonna bring my my um, my Pooh Bear because that is kind of more fill-in stitches. So if I get to where I don't wanna think, I just wanna stitch, then I'll work on that. But I mean, I'm not gonna go through every single card here, but you can see just how gorgeous these cards are and um, love these as floss drops. So, and then it turned out, and then I don't why, know why I thought this was funny, but it's like, again, it wasn't planned, but the hair cards, um, all the blondes ended up in there. I got Rapunzel and Cinderella. Well, she's not blonde. <laughs> but anyway, so that is this project that I have kitted up. And you can see, like, this is the dress area. This is the wings. And then these are the, this is the original flower. Yeah, so I am very excited about this project. I'm excited to kind of start it, um, have it ready to go for the retreat. I think it'll be fun to work on it on the retreat. I think people will be um, kind of intrigued by it because I'm intrigued by it. Um, and I think it's gonna work great and I, I I love doing the Little Mermaid, using the Mediterranean Mermaid pattern so much, um, and it's the same kind of thing. So I think that that's going to be so fun, and I'm really, really excited about it. So I worked on that actually several nights this week, um, but then because I did those floss drop cards, that got me in a, uh, you know, looking on on. Amazon for different sets of cards because I'm like these are cool I love these floss drops and um, so I've ordered a couple sets of cards now you can get cards ranging from you know like five dollars to like twenty dollars now the twenty dollar sets are usually really pretty but I don't want to spend twenty dollars for a bunch of sets of cards um, I got a couple sets that are gonna come sometime this month you know they're not quick like a couple of different cat ones. The one thing with the cards though, is you have to be cognizant of reading like the description or the pictures, because for me at least, I want cards that have a different picture on every card. I don't want, because some of the sets are really pretty, but really the only where you get the artwork is on like the face cards. And then the number cards are all just regular cards. So to me, as far as making flash drops, that's a waste. Um, because I want the pretty ones. So, um, I haven't done anything with these yet, but I might, I might make some cards this week. And then, I don't know, I think I might, like, split them into, like, sets of 10 or 20. And then I will use some, and maybe I'll, I'll give away some, because they're cool, right? Um, so I got this deck, which is Fairies Featuring the Art of Amy Brown. So if you like Amy Brown, um... These are just so pretty. I mean, look at these cards. And they're gonna, for the most part, work really well with the same setup that I used for um, for the Disney ones because they'll end up having a bigger hole here. But in the for the most part, it's not gonna really affect the picture that much. And there's only a couple where um, I might have an issue. <laughs> this card, I don't know. This card I think I might keep out and just use it in somebody's golden book because if I put if I put the thing I'm gonna it's gonna go right through that fox I also thought about maybe putting the big hole uh long ways um if that works better so you know there might be some cards that I do that do a set that way um but these cards are just really they're just really pretty cards and you know they're gonna make really pretty Floss drops, I think. And then, as I said, I have a couple sets of like cat things that are coming. And then I saw this set and I had to get this because you guys know, um, Julie is such a good friend to me and she has four birds. I made her the little bird uh, crochet things. And I saw this set of bird cards and, or parrots actually specifically. 
and there's a few in here that um, I've pulled out. So not all of these cards will make good flush drops just because of the way the birds are positioned. But there's uh, several that actually are, uh, are Julie's birds, like that one. And see, this wouldn't make a good flash card because any way you turn it, you're going to end up cutting through the parrot's head. And, you know, so, but those, these cards that aren't going to work that great, I'm going to put, I made a little gold book for her, so they're just going to go in there. But, um, this is, this is a female eclectus and she has one. So yeah, these cards are going to go just in her book, but there's just a few that really wouldn't make a good flash drop. So I made a little flash drop set for her. This is 20 cards. I pulled out 20 that I thought were especially pretty or, um, and then I, hey baggy. So, um, the, the sets usually come with like a card that has the back card um, also on the front. So I just use that as like a cover. So it doesn't have like a flash drop thing. And this set actually had a card in it that had the birds. Like it tells which birds are on which card. So I put that in the back and then I just made a set of 20 flash drops for her using the same setup because um, most of these cards have the birds like facing the center or their heads, you know, towards the middle. So it works. So anyway, so I made that set for Jolie and then I have a bunch more. I can make another set of bird ones and then I'm gonna make some sets with the Amy Brown ones and then I have the cat ones coming, cat ones coming and I will make some sets with those for myself and maybe as giveaways. Let me know what you think. I mean, do you think that these are silly? Do you think that they're awesome? Do you think that they're way extra, which is good or way extra, which is not good? <laughs> Let me know, I'm, I'm curious. Um, I mean, is that something that if I did, you know, a giveaway, you know, for my, my stitching anniversary or something like that um, and had a couple sets of these, would that be something that you would be interested in winning? So let me know what your thoughts are. This is the cutter that I got. Um, I have, you know, obviously I have several different cutters for the paper crafting stuff that I've done with the little golden books, but I specifically wanted a, an oval one because I thought I could get a bigger space that didn't take up too much of the card. Like you don't need it to be tall, right? You just need it to be wide. So that's why I got the oval. And this particular one I got, actually I got the cheapest one that I could find that actually it was the second cheapest. The cheapest wasn't a prime thing and it would have taken three weeks and I didn't want to wait. This was a get it tomorrow thing and it was a dollar more. But it's also a really cool one because it does lock, which is the only one that I have that does that, um, which is really nice for saving space and storage. Okay, so that was like an obsession this week. Um, I spent a couple nights working on this project and cutting cards and uh, honestly I love it so again let me know what you think um they are extra I, I get that I get that they're very extra but but yeah sometimes extra is exactly what you need and you know and like with these as I was saying when I'm going through and I'm gonna have to look for a plus it's a fun experience because looking at the cards makes me happy okay haul this week um I got a chart wasn't planning on it um but I saw it and basically was like oh my gosh I have to have that somebody on some channel I was watching mentioned Nemu I think that's how you say it it's a French company um and I had seen Gary from um Garon uh, stitchery. Um, I met him out here in California one time he was on a business trip and he went to the Southern California stitching group when I was going. Um, and, uh, he was working on an elf and just the way that the pattern was, I mean, it's a very, very obvious, it's a very style that's very Nemu. Um, it was just really, really pretty. And, um, 
So somebody mentioned it and I'm like, you know, I've never looked at those. Let me go look. And the first thing that popped out was a new chart. I think this is from 2023. Um, made in France. Um, does it say, does it? It doesn't say a date that I can see off the top of my head, but I think this was a 2023 chart. And I had to get it because look at it. Black cat. It's called Lady. It's called uh, De Mosha, which means the lady and the cat or the lady of the cat. And uh, purple dress. Black cat. Flowers in the hair. I just had to have it. So, yeah. So I went ahead and spent the 15 bucks, I think it was, to get this one because had to have it. Um, definitely will stitch that at some point. <clears throat> and then the other haul is I told you guys that I was on eBay, you know, getting inexpensive books. These were, these were about $4 each. Um, I got three crochet books and two of them I think are good. The third one is pretty meh. This one is pretty meh for any square love. I thought it was going to be, um, like different kinds of granny squares. It's basically just shows you how to make granny squares, which is great because once you, you know, once you know how to make granny square, a plain granny square, you know how to make a plain granny square. And then it has, you know, 8,000 more pages with different projects using the same kind of granny square. I'm not impressed. So this book is very meh and um, I'm not super impressed by it. So that I might give away at some point or donate or something because it's not super exciting. Um, this one, Crochet Adorned, uh, Reinvent Your Wardrobe with Crochet Accents, Embellishments, and Trims. Um, again, it's it's got some good stuff, but most of it seems pretty, nothing that I'm like, gonna get excited about um this is the prettiest thing the cover thing um which I hate that I hate when it's like oh the cover you know, drew you in and then that was really all that was in it that that I found interesting um although it does have it does have some tutorials that are good on different like stitches stitch patterns that um that might be worth keeping it for. Um, so yeah, so there's a section in this that I think is valuable. And then this, which is just like this little folder thing, um, is actually what I'm gonna probably use more than anything is, is uh, you can crochet socks and it's got six sock patterns and um, I am interested in using this and making at least one pair of socks. I think I'm gonna do these. Um, but they're all, you know, well, there's four of them. So, well actually there's three and three. So these green ones are kind of cool too. So yeah, so that I think was worth it. The other two, um, one is maybe and the other one is in, not really. Okay, so that was all of my hauls, um, plans. Um, nothing major. Um, Friday night, I think, and Saturday is uh, the Chinese New Year, Year of the Dragon. Um, so a lot of people are starting a Year of the Dragon, Sal, right? And um, I'm not going to start a new dragon, but I do have this one. So I will be stitching on this this week in honor of that, Year of the Dragon. Um, my little snap dragon. I'm stitching on this. Uh, Julie's also stitching on this, so she probably, I told her I was gonna do that. And she's like, oh, good idea. I think I'll do that too. So I will be stitching on my little snap dragon this week. He's so cute. 
And then um, I was watching Laura stitching to the shore on Friday, and she said that she and Debbie, um, Debbie, who's Glitter Dove Fairy on Instagram, and on, I don't think she has, she doesn't have a YouTube channel, but I mean, that's her, her name for comments and stuff. Um, they were looking at the Just Cross Stitch magazine, and were planning on starting that um, rain pattern with the, like, the girl in the rain, and in April, for, like, April showers, and I really like that pattern, so when I saw it, I was thinking, like, oh, I kind of want to st uh, stitch that, um, so maybe I'll start that with them, too, but, you know, I have a couple months to even think about that, um, but, yeah, that's, that's basic plans for this week, you know, keep going, um, cut up some more cards, make flash drops, and keep going on my charts, so, um, I think that's about it. Until I see you guys again, I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, stay warm and dry if it's raining or snowing where you are. Um, stay cool if it's if you're in the southern hemisphere and it's hot. Um, yeah, just I hope you have a good week and relax and, you know, I hope everything goes well. And until I see you again, please remember to be content, be kind, and be crafty. This is Carla. Bye-bye.